stick around if you want to see me turn this piece of plywood into a fun garden drinking game. So what I've got here is a piece of 12 millimetre plywood and it measures four foot long by two foot wide, which is roughly 120 centimetres long by 60 centimetres wide. And this is gonna be a cornhole game. But before we do anything in terms of cutting a hole for the cornhole board, we've got to add a framework to it. And for that, I'm gonna be using CLS. To save measuring, I didn't bother measuring on this. Instead, I offered up the piece of CLS I made a pencil mark on the edge of the board and I knew that's exactly where I needed to cut. I could do the two shorter pieces first and then I could lie in the longer piece which should be roughly 120, but it doesn't matter. Lie it in place and mark where that needs to be cut off to as well. You don't have to take any measurements because you know then it's gonna be a perfect fit for the board you've got. To join the frame together, I'm just gonna be using glue and screws. It's really quick and easy to do. In the corners, I'm gonna add some wood glue. I'll then drill a couple of pilot holes through the wood. Then I can secure it together with a couple of screws. And I can repeat that on the other three corners. And then we've got the frame together. It's just a case of adding some wood glue, putting the plywood on top, and securing it in place with some more screws. Now that all the main parts are together, we've got the frame done and we've got the plywood on, we need to cut out a hole for where the bean bags are gonna be thrown into. Now you can mark this out with something like a compass, but I'm just gonna use a saucer. This is about 15 centimetres in diameter. I've got it centred left to right, and it's about 23 centimetres down from the top. So I'll be able to mark around this with a pencil, and I can cut that out now with a jigsaw. So the first thing I'm gonna do is drill a hole so the jigsaw blade can pass through. With that hole drilled, the blade can easily fit through now and I'll be able to cut out the circle. Now we can get it all sanded smooth. I went ahead and I sanded all the main framework nice and smooth. I've got all the sharp edges removed and now I can turn my attention to the legs. I'm using the same CLS that I use for the frame and I've got two pieces cut to 12 centimetres long. I'm also going to go ahead and cut a couple of curves on the corners. I'm going to do it on both sides. At the top of the leg, it'll enable it to pivot when it's in the framework. We're going to have a bolt going through the middle and on the bottom of the leg, Adding the curve means that it will definitely sit flat on whatever the surface is. If I was to do a straight cut for an angle, if that angle's wrong, it's going to end up sitting on a really narrow point. A curve is a much better option for this, I think, anyway. I'll be able to sand that to make it more of a nice curve. So now that the hole's cut out and we've got it all sanded nice and smooth, it's time to apply a base coat of paint. You can go with any colour you like for this, but I'm going to keep it pretty neutral. So now the base coat of paint's dry, we can turn our attention back to the legs and how we're going to attach them to the frame. As I mentioned, we're going to be using some bolts. These are M8 carriage bolts, also known as coach bolts. And all I'm going to do is drill a 10mm hole towards the top of the leg and I've got a centre point marked ready to do that. Now I can do the same to the other leg. And I can use this one as a bit of a template to mark exactly where to drill. I've got the main frame flipped upside down now, as you can see. So this will let me know where I need to actually fit the legs. We want the legs to be folding out from the top of the board. So the end nearest where the hole has been cut out. I've marked where I need to drill. So I can use the exact same 10 millimeter drill bit to drill the hole through the sides now. So this is how the leg assembly is gonna to go together. First, we've got a 10 centimetre long M8 carriage bolt, and that's going to go through the hole we just drilled in the side of the frame. Then onto the inside of that, we're going to apply a penny washer. Then we can add the leg. Then we can add another penny washer. And then we can secure it all in place using a nut. Now, ideally, I would be using a wing nut, but there wasn't any in stock. So for now, I'm just going to use a regular nut instead. I can always swap it out later. Now, if I was actually using wing nuts, I could easily tighten this up by hand, but because it's a regular nut, I'm gonna to have to use a spanner. It doesn't need to be too tight, and this should allow it to swivel down, out of place, and easy to swivel open 
for when we want to actually play the game. So now we've got the legs attached, we can have a look at getting some colour onto it. We're going to want to divide this up, you can do whatever pattern you like. I'm going to keep it really simple, I've got a couple of squares at the bottom, a rectangle in the middle, and then I've split the top square into a few triangles. We'll be able to get the colours applied, use a black marker to divide them up to make them stand out a bit more, and then we can write on the forfeits. So the aim of the game is to get as many of your bean bags through the hole in the board as possible. Now being a drinking game, there are some forfeits listed and of course you can choose whatever forfeit you like. But if the bean bag was to land on this one for example, then you'd have to take a drink and a shot. This is a great game for a big group of friends, especially if you've got a barbecue on the go as well. Now I was going to demonstrate what it's like actually playing the game, particularly when you miss and you land on a forfeit. The only trouble is, I don't miss. Maybe I'll miss sometimes. I really hope that you like this project and I've got a bit of a bet for you. If I get this one in, you gotta like the video. And if this one goes in, you gotta subscribe and press the bell for notifications. A deal's a deal. I'll catch you on the next one.